It is one of the most recognised sounds in the world of broadcasting. In fact, it's coming now. That's the Angelus Bells on RTE, which has proven controversial over recent years. We've talked about it on Talkback, in fact, particularly amongst Ireland's secularists who object to the national broadcaster, including what is essentially a call to prayer as part of their evening schedule. Yesterday, that slot became the people's Angelus. No, it wasn't Jeremy Corbyn's idea. But to tell us why and what's different, we're joined by RTE's head of religious programmes, Roger Childs. Good afternoon, Roger. Uh, we haven't got Roger yet. We'll come to Roger in a second, hopefully. Michael Nugent is with us, thankfully, from Atheist Ireland. How are you doing, Michael? How are you? Good to, good to be with you again. You've got the floor all to yourself now until we get Roger into the studio. Um, tell us, over the years, a little bit about the debate around the Angelus. Well, RTE has broadcast the Catholic Angelus uh, at, at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock on radio and television for, for decades, since the Marian year back in, in the early part of the 20th century. Now, for years, it has been an overtly uh, Catholic call to prayer with Catholic imagery, and it was quite clear what it was. RTE are now trying to say that they're making it more inclusive. And the way that they're saying that, that they're making it more inclusive is to have different imagery behind the, uh, the bells of the Angelus uh, and imagery of just people doing ordinary things, people reflecting, you know, dur during the taking time out from their, their busy day. And uh, and that would indeed be quite a good change if it wasn't also accompanied by the title of the Angelus and the bells of the Angelus. So effectively... What oh, it's RTE... not the people's Angelus, though. Well, it, it, no, the people's Angelus is, is a phrase they're using for one day of the week where, where they're asking people to, to enter a competition to put visuals behind it. But the, but the rules of that competition are still... that It's still called the Angelus and it, it still has to have the bells as the soundtrack. Uh, now, the difficulty with that from an atheist or secularist point of view is that it doesn't respect our non-religious philosophical beliefs because it's essentially telling us that we should pause to reflect on our lives beneath a Catholic call to prayer. Now, if you reverse that and if you hypothetically imagined that RTE, for some reason, were broadcasting a, an, an atheist slot before the news every day telling people that there's no God and, and Catholics complained about it and they were told, well, sure, you can just... You know, you can pray during that and you can be included that way. People would immediately realise that it's not appropriate to suggest to Catholics that they should pray while somebody is repeatedly telling them that there's no God. And equally, it's, it's inappropriate to tell atheists that they should reflect underneath a Catholic call to prayer. They're just bells, though, aren't they? Well, they're not just bells. They're, they're a specific uh, Catholic call to prayer and they have a specific role within the Catholic Church, which, which is to, to uh, celebrate the um, Annunciation of, of, of Jesus, uh, Mary being told that she's going to become pregnant with Well, Jesus. that's the history of it, but all, all that's left is bells. Well, no. Well, if the, if that was the case, then they should have no problem not calling it the Angelus. But they're calling it the Angelus. They're, they're having the Angelus bells, and and that that unambiguous um, Catholic call to prayer is is, is not just uh, something that that uh, atheists and secularists would have problems with. Um, Presbyterians would have problems with it. Uh, Muslims, I I, I know don't particularly have a problem with it being broadcast, but their position is that it's nothing to do with them. It's not that they feel included, it's that they just say, well, it's for Catholics and it's a Catholic country. Our position is that it's not a Catholic country, it's a pluralist country, that RTE has a public service remit to respect everybody's beliefs equally. And it's not that difficult to do. I mean, it's, it, it's not as if it's impossible to come up with, with a, a um, an, an inclusive moment of reflection that, that, that wouldn't exclude anybody. In fact, they practically have it in terms of the imagery at the moment. All that they have to do is drop the title The Angelus and drop the, the bells. Uh, do you want them to drop the bells as well? Couldn't we keep the bells and lose, lose the term Angelus? Would that not make you happy? Well, no, the, the whole point of it is that, 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 uh, that it, it shouldn't represent any particular belief. Like I, I would be, I'll put it to you this way, I would be just as opposed to RTE uh, having a minute in, in which there was an atheist reading from Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion for a minute every day. Like, that would be just as, as inappropriate. It, it, it's, it's not an anti-religion position. It's an anti-giving undue preference by the national broadcaster to any religious or non-religious belief. Radio 4 still has bells on Sunday. Have you ever heard that, Michael? They, they 
got bells from a particular parish church somewhere in England. It's quite old-fashioned in a way, quite nostalgic. A lot of people who have no religious interest whatsoever still like the sound of it. Yeah, well, look, if people like the sound of bells, you know, they can play bells all day in their houses. If they, if they want to, to pray the Angelus or any other Catholic prayer, they can do it all day, every day. We're, we're, we're not in any way objecting to people either listening to bells or, or uh, manifesting their, their per personal religious faith. What we're saying is that that's not the role of the public service broadcaster, of the national broadcaster. And, and the, I, I, I doubt, I'm not sure of the situation with those bells you're talking about, but I doubt very much that they're played um, every day before the, the, the main... No, they only play on once a week, yeah. And if you have just joined us on Talk Back today, this is what we're talking about. That is the Angelus, the Angelus Bells. Roger Childs, the RTE Head of Religious Programmes, is with us. Hi, Roger. Hello. How are uh, you? While you? I'm doing very well, but while you've been making your way to the studio, Michael Nugent has been explaining why, as a secularist, he still objects to the Angelus Bell because it's called the Angelus, which has a religious meaning, and it's a bell, which is essentially the national broadcaster calling people to prayer. So even though you've got these nice new films and a competition around them which will encourage reflectiveness, why do you have this? Uh, why does the national broadcaster still have this religious advertisement at six o'clock every night? Well. I don't think it is a religious advertisement. It's a tradition which is 53 years old, so it's older than I am. It's one I inherited when I moved to Ireland, and I thought, what do you do with this? First of all, find out whether uh, people want it, whether people like it, uh, what job does it serve? So we conducted some audience research, and we found very quickly that uh, the majority, it was nearly two-thirds majority, saw a value in creating a space for reflection or prayer within the schedules, that a majority were in favour of keeping the Angelus and the chimes. So if you're going to change that, if you're going to scrap that, you're going against an expressed wish of a majority of people. So, But if you that, were putting together a schedule from scratch today, Roger, would you do this at six o'clock at night, every night? Almost certainly not, but that's, that's kind of by the by, because... Um, the nature of society is, is they evolve and they have all sorts of uh, traditions which are treasured by some, loathed by others. My job was to make sense of that. You know, I, I've listened to the objections of people like Michael Nugent and he's not alone here, but what he's saying is that it's anachronistic, that it's giving a privileged position to one faith. So I thought, well, we can address that. Let's make it creative. Let's make it all-embracing. And that's exactly what we've tried to do. So the films that you will see now at six o'clock, the, uh, the six newly commissioned ones, which were um, produced through Open Tender, and what I'm calling the People's Angelus, which are coming from aspiring filmmakers and artists, are very specifically a response to a commissioning brief to produ uh, produce one-minute non-verbal films that are creating a space for prayer or reflection for people of all faiths or none. It couldn't be clearer. So, Michael... Uh, whether you like it or not, you're a, de you're a Democrat, of course. You're living in a society where the majority of people want this. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Democrat, and uh, the way that democracies are, should be judged is how they treat minorities. And in, in the, I mean, we, we know certainly up in Northern Ireland, uh, you'll be as aware as we are here, the dangers of sectarian majority rule as the basis for taking decisions about religious-based ideas. So is that not uh, reading an awful lot into a, a bell? Well, no, it's not because it's it, it is a a Catholic call to prayer, and it is quite easy to uh, put together a genuinely inclusive moment of reflection that would include everybody, including atheists and secularists. Uh, as, as I said earlier, RTE are halfway there in terms of the imagery. All they have to do is drop the name, which, which both Roger and the Director General have already said that they would consider doing in the past, um, and, and drop the bells. And then there we are, we've got it sorted. But, but I mean, what, what I would ask, ask Roger, what, well, here, Roger, is, 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 I mean, would you even dream of putting on a programme that was uh, for one minute having somebody repeatedly telling people that there's no God, and then tell, telling Catholics that they could feel included under that because there's nice imagery and, and that they could pray during it. Well, funnily enough, I had Richard Dawkins on The Meaning of Life on Sunday night doing pretty much exactly that, and I know that you, Michael, are going to be our guest on A Leap of Faith. Thank you for coming on this coming Friday on Radio <laughs> 1. So, yes, we include atheist voices, we explore... Uh, religious persuasions right across the spectrum. So Would you let us do it for a minute before the prime time evening news every day? That's not what we do. We're, it's not a Catholic slot, as I say. I've created a, a, 
a, a more level playing field where very consciously it's a moment of prayer or reflection. If you choose to say a Catholic prayer, that's absolutely fine. This is not a secular society. This is a society which, according to the last census, 93.4%, uh, I think it was, of the population voluntarily identified with a religion. So when he, um, when Michael talks about majority rule not being allowed to dictate, minority rule shouldn't either. Secularism should not be dictating to a country in which there is a vast, diverse range of beliefs. Well, that's the whole point about secularism, that it doesn't impose. Uh, we, we live in a pluralist society and the people should be pluralist, but the only way for the state to protect equally everybody's right to their own religious or non-religious philosophical beliefs is for the state and by extension the state national broadcaster to, to remain neutral on it. But I mean, the, the point is, Roger, you, you know, and I don't mean you personally, but I mean, RTE knows that this is excluding us. It knows that it's against our philosophical convictions. It knows that, that, that we do not want to be told to be included under a Catholic call to prayer. It is possible for you to do something that does include everybody. Why don't you do that? Can I just tell you on 81771, we're getting quite a few texts from people, Michael, defending the Angelus. Sure, from yeah. a Protestant background, people saying, I'm a Presbyterian, I don't have a big problem that with That doesn't with surprise the me at all, William. What a, a lot of the feedback I get is, you know, because complaints are made on behalf of minority faiths with people saying you know what about the muslims what about the hindus i've consulted uh, community leaders faith leaders from the various minority faiths and guess what they say don't scrap it on our account we love the fact that there is a national broadcaster that makes room for prayer or reflection this is not a secular society and the, the comparison i would draw in terms of the bell is with st patrick's day or even indeed christmas these are things that are undoubtedly christian in their origins but which have grown over time into something that are embraced by people of all cultures, and that's an enrichment of Irish society. I'm now getting some texts, uh, Michael, from people describing themselves as atheists or secularists, saying, essentially, this is a little small-minded on your part. Aren't there bigger issues for Atheist Ireland to be focused on? Well, of course there are bigger issues. There are bigger issues like the Catholic Church controlling 90% of our primary schools with a, a religious ethos that's in, in, incorporated in the entire curriculum with exemptions from our equality laws that allow them to discriminate against atheist teachers and families and minority faith teachers and families. There's the fact that our uh, judges and our Taoiseach and our president have to swear a religious oath in order to take office. There are a whole number of issues that are far more important than this that we actively work on. But we can we can multitask. We can, we can simultaneously challenge those big issues and and also challenge the the, the kind of background noise of, uh, of of religious sectarianism that is manifest through this annulus and through the fact that, that that even sitting here today, Roger, and I know that Roger intends. To, to be inclusive and is trying to be inclusive but there's just a blind spot there that wouldn't be there if it was the other way around that that he's sitting in front of me knowing that I do not feel included by this and, and yet still happy to justify it. We'll go to the phone lines right after this. All right, let's go to Martin. Hi, Martin. Hello there, William. What do you make of the Angelus? I actually think it's... Uh soothing thing it gives you uh, I remember when I was looking back as a kid watching RTE and actually having the feelings of you know it wasn't necessarily a religious experience but it was something that was quite uh, uh, give you a warm feeling essentially but I actually my issue with the likes of Michael is that he's always on harping about any vestige of religion needs to be removed from the public arena and you know I <laughs> My interpretation of what he's actually trying to say is that he can't tolerate uh, he can't tolerate religion, and he's supposed to be tolerant, which basically makes him intolerant. Michael Nugent. No, I'm perfectly tolerant of religion. I think everybody has the right to believe whatever they, they want to believe. I, 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 in fact, I campaign actively for the rights of, of religious minorities uh, who are discriminated against in Ireland as well. I, I, Atheist Ireland campaigns for uh, Christians who are uh, persecuted in Islamic states, including Asiya Bibi, who's facing persecution for, for allegedly... Um, uh, blaspheming against the, the Prophet Muhammad. I strongly support the right of, of everybody to believe what they want to believe and to manifest their beliefs. My point is that the only way 
to, for the state to ensure that everybody has an equal right to uh, manifest their beliefs is for the state to remain neutral. I'm not asking the people to remain neutral. I agree it's not a secular society. It's a pluralist society and it should be and will be a pluralist society. But the only way to protect that pluralism is for the state to be the referee rather than one of the players. May I just say something here, William? Yes, that, of course, um, the arbiter of this is not Roger Childs. The arbiter isn't RTE. That We're responsible to the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. And on four occasions, the, the sort of complaint that Michael is making here, that uh, this is giving a privileged position to uh, Catholics, that this is in effect sectarian, have been made to the BAI and not su supported. So that's where I take my cue. This yeah. is not deemed by the state regulator to be a sectarian or privileged position. However, I have a daily duty and I'm exercising it now to make sure that we make it as inclusive as possible. Well, Mike, Michael, actually, sorry, Michael, yeah, just right. on this point about uh, a pluralist Ireland, yeah. that may be your aspiration, that may be your ambition. Is it constitutionally the case, though, that Ireland is a secular country? It's constitutionally, constitutionally it's and legally the case. No, co constitu well, constitution. if it is the case that Christianity has some kind of special status within the constitution, and that many or most people within Ireland want that to be respected, surely the state national broadcasters should reflect that. Well, th th I would dispute the second part we were saying. If you, if you look, for example, at the fact that we have just become the first country in the world to uh, legalise gay marriage by popular vote uh, in, in a country that's nominally Catholic and uh, constitutionally nominally Christian. The, the, the people have moved far ahead of the, the state and it, it's up to the uh, state to change the constitution or allow the people the opportunity to change the constitution to reflect the new reality. But one thing on, on what Roger's saying about the BAI, and that's true, it has been challenged before and, and it has been rejected. But the context in which it was rejected was the old Angeles, in which RTE's uh, defence of it was explicitly that it is a religious uh, slot and, and, and that it... it, it not that it's inclusive, but that it was a religious slot and the BAI found that are entitled to do a religious slot. Uh, we will be complaining to the BAI about this um, version of the Angelus, but under a different argument, which is that by shifting it and, uh, in, into something that is supposed to be inclusive, that RTE is going beyond its remit, firstly by changing a Roman Catholic call to prayer into something else, which isn't the role of a broadcaster to do, and secondly by not respecting the non-religious philosophical convictions of atheists by telling us that we should feel included and should, should reflect on our lives under what is a Catholic call to prayer. Now, that's a new argument that the BAI hasn't heard, and it'll be interesting to see... Well, let's see if we can trail Roger's possible new response to that argument. Roger. Well, when when we receive that complaint, we'll respond to it point for point. And uh, I've, I've done so with courtesy and rigour in the past with Michael. I listened carefully to all voices. I Just before I came into this studio, and apologies for delaying you, I, uh, I just received a, um, a, a submission from the TD, Mr Healy Ray, um, just defending the Angelus and, and wishing to go to the barricades to do so. We listen to all those voices. We will never please everybody. However, we uh, would make the point that this is part of a very diverse range of religious output that serves people of all faiths and none. We would make the point that it's one minute out of 1,440 in the day on one channel only of RTE television and one channel only of, our, uh, of, of the 10 digital radio channels. So it's not exactly a corralling, an imposition of any particular faith or dogma. Zero thirty thirty eighty fifty five fifty five. Rita, hi. Hi, William. How are you? Um, just really in relation to the Angelus, I find it a, a very beautiful time of the day if you're lucky enough to have the radio on that comes on or on the TV. And it is one of those things I say it is totally unoffensive to anyone. I'm a Catholic myself, but certainly around the world you would hear the Angelus bells, and I think it's a very calming thing. It's, it's certainly offensive and it's no one in my mind. Does it feel, does Rita, it feel religious I, to you, Rita? Sorry. Pardon? Does it feel re religious to you? Certainly, it, it gives me the opportunity, if, if I have the opportunity, to, to actually stand back for a minute to, to um, get a bit of levelness. Mm. Um, I think it, it's, it's very positive, but from every point of view, I couldn't imagine that it would be offensive to anyone. Uh, go ahead, Roger. Sorry, what I was going That's to right. say was that a, a, a headmaster wrote to me, a primary school headmaster, and said, 
What I like about the Angelus is that for the person of faith, it's a moment of grace. For the person without faith, it's a moment of peace. What's not to like? Now, yeah, not yeah, everybody will accept that it's p uh, performing that role, but that's our aspiration. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Uh, Rita, thank you very much. A text uh, aimed at Michael Nugent. Michael, would you go to Saudi Arabia and call for the end of the call to prayer? If I was there, I would, and there are atheists uh, in Saudi man. Arabia. There are atheist groups in, in those countries uh, as, as the world is becoming more secular. And yes, it does require bravery to do yeah. things like that, and, but, but I, and I would like to think that I would. Um, all I can say is, is, is that, uh, you know, when the IRA cam campaign and loyalist paramilitary campaigns were happening here, I campaigned actively against those. I, like to, I would like to think that I would be e equally uh, willing to, to stand up to the type of violent dictatorships that you have in those theological countries. Michael Nugent, thank you very much. Thanks to Roger Chan as well for that conversation on the Angela.